But my first guest is interesting because if you watched in the previous hour, you noticed that there was a common theme of rebellion to redemption. Mm -hmm. And if you looked at our next guest, you wouldn't think it by looking at him, but this gentleman has had such an amazing and incredible journey uh -huh. through life, starting with rebellion and coming to a place now where he is being so amazingly used by God. Amen. His passion, though, is to show addicts that there is more to life than the addictions that enslave Amen. them. And in fact, he's dedicated the second half of his life to doing just that. Right. And God has called him through amazing and extreme circumstances to mm -hmm. do the amazing things he's doing now. Mm -hmm. And I really want to introduce you to a fascinating guest named John Childress. That's right. John, it's a pleasure to have you here tonight. Pleasure to meet you. You're welcome, yes. Thank you. Thank you for joining Thank us you. from California. Oh, my pleasure. I'm glad that we were able to make the trip. Me too. I have to tell you, Tanya has been devouring your book. You sent it to us about a month ago, and she has just been like, can you believe this guy did this? Can you believe this guy did And looking at you, you know, I see a, a mild-mannered, you know, grandfather now, and I'm like looking at him like, wow, you know. You've got quite a you've life got story, an amazing my story. Yes. Uh, I have been through a lot of different experiences. I made a lot of really poor choices in my life, uh, and some good ones, and I, I would be lying if I didn't say there was some really fun times and things that I enjoyed, but there was so much more that was fruitless and left me wanting more constantly, mm -hmm. and it didn't matter how much drugs or alcohol or pornography I could get into my life, it was never enough. Right. Never enough. Right. It always left me wanting more. Did this, and then did this start at a young age for you? And It did. I mean, I really got into pornography about the age of 13 or 14, probably. Yeah. That was right. probably my first addiction. And it's something that I fed on throughout my life at different stages. Sometimes it wouldn't be a part of my life. Other times it would almost be all-encompassing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, during parts of my life, especially when I was smoking uh, crystal meth, uh, it was an obsession. And, and it was more than just that. It was more than just magazines, videos. It was sure. going to clubs and, and, and lots of different things. Yeah. But, but praise God, he, can, he delivered me through all that. Amen. Yeah. And he can deliver anybody out there in the audience who has any of these problems. Amen. He's a merciful Lord. And we all are prodigal sons. And Amen. Daughters. Yes. It's yeah. interesting because in the previous hour, we had spoken to a woman who had, at an early age in life, entered into an adulterous relationship with a married man. Right. Yeah. The key thing that she said, and I noticed on the front of your book um, that you write, very first thing that you mm -hmm. wrote up here, you put isolation. Yeah. And I said, it's amazing. I see this amazing theme that the devil or, or temptation strikes at a time in life when you find yourself isolated and vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Would you say that's? I would definitely say that. And for me, the more I got into drugs and the deeper I got into that, the more I isolated myself. And sure, I spent some time with friends here and there partying yeah. and, and thinking I was having fun. But more and more often, it got into that isolation thing, especially when pornography really grasped, grasped me sure. and, and the obsession and, and the lust that followed. And it was terrible. Uh, I mean, I never felt so bad in my life, uh, so despondent, um, without hope. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, unfortunately, some of this took place in my life as a Christian. Right. Oh, but yeah. As I talk about in the book, I, I became a Christian in jail in 1977 mm -hmm. on Christmas Eve. So, and I got involved in a Christian community, and we did outreaches, and we preached the Word of God, and we even went to cults, and, you know, we, the Lord works in our lives. Sure. Right. Uh, but I didn't cut everything loose. Sure. Well, you know? I mean, if Christians were perfect the minute we accepted Christ, yeah. he would have never had to die. He could have come down and shook our hand and said, hey, you're good. Yeah. You know? yeah, I wish I could be like Enoch and I walked along the ground and then I was no more because I was with God. That right. just hasn't happened right. how it happened for me. But it doesn't happen like that for a lot of people. It I mean, they struggle. for most of us. Yeah. Right, yeah. exactly. And I think that that's this whole thing. I mean, I've got several things that I had highlighted in here, but um, things about you, you say, which is true, addictions start small, but they never stay small. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. they just continue to grow. They feed on each and other. Grow and grow. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then one choice leads to another choice. And I know in your book, you describe your story in detail about how you start with one drug and then you go to another drug. And I guess you're constantly seeking that high. And for you, were you trying to um, avoid or escape certain things in your life or just trying to chase the next high? Or? Well, yeah, probably a combination of several of those yeah. things. You know, I think a lot of it, at first, I always felt less than. I have always been overweight all my life. So that was something. I always felt like I never measured up to what my dad expected, hmm. which I guess I think a lot of men probably yeah. have I, that I, in their I lives. agree. You know, uh, of course, the pornography thing came in also. Sure. And um, sin, I, I think, at least for me, and I think for most of us, is addictive. Right. You know, sure. We get caught up in it, and we want to continue to do it. Sure. And it just feeds that flesh and, and makes us, the, we've been talking about this evening, that separation from God. Mm. And um, I just, I kept, 
I think adding things on and on and on, a lot of it was because I thought it would make it easier for me to talk to girls. Right. And it never did. Hmm. I never could talk to girls. It didn't matter how much I drank. Right. I still yeah. was a wallflower. Yeah. You know, I was a band nerd in high school and college, and I, I just always felt less than, so I never felt comfortable talking to, to women at all. Hmm. Yeah. So when, after you accepted Christ, you said you obviously were still struggling in things. Um, how did the Lord turn you around and bring you to this place of, um, I know you ended up seven years ago marrying a missionary. Yes, uh, and that's what was really cool. I'm like, when I was reading this, I'm like, wow, I, I love your story uh, because, it, you, you know, you've been through so much, everything, tried all these drugs and pornography, been in jail, um, and even went to someone's house with a loaded gun at one time. I'm like, wow, look what God has done. I, yeah. I love this. Tell us how God got you to this place, to be Sally and your ministry. You know, I got cut up and... and I went through a marriage uh, that was real short mm -hmm. and it was real bad. My ex showed up uh, on blazing on LSD and rather than to have the marriage annulled, I just joined her and the marriage went downhill very quickly. Yeah. Uh, we split up, oh, actually she left. I wound up doing drugs again. I went back to the person I was before I came to know the Lord. Um, I wound up in a cheap motel room in Merced, California, smoking meth all night, smoking pot, stacks of pornography on the bed yeah. and at 6 a.m. in the morning I, I, I'm thinking there I said what am I doing here yeah I know that God does this is not what God wants for me mm -hmm. if I don't make some choices or some changes really quick yes. I'm gonna wind up being found in a motel like in the motel room like this day yes yes and I said I gotta make I gotta do something different I gotta make changes I went home I I drove down to my sister's house in Los Angeles and we talked and she asked if I would like to come down there and live with them and I said, I'll go pack up and move back down mm -hmm. there. And it still took me some time to get off the meth. It was really hard. It really took me blowing an audition in a blues band I was trying to get into mm -hmm. to really get me away from that. Uh, and when that happened, I finally just got fed up. I just threw my arms up in frustration, and I just stopped. Yeah. Uh, but I had a hard time getting off the pot. But the whole time, the, the day I moved in with my sister, she had Calvary Chapel Radio going. So Pastor Chuck and Greg uh, Laurie and Ralph uh -huh. Reese, all those guys yeah. are on there all the time. Right. And once I got off the meth, it's like, oh, man, God's trying to talk to me here. Yeah. yeah. My sister doesn't have these stations on there by accident. Right. They don't go to church. Oh, wow. You know, I know they know the Lord, mm -hmm. but yeah. they're not going to church. Mm -hmm. And they were, whether she knew it or not, and she may not think this at this point now. Right. Because she's read the book, too. And she goes, how come I didn't say something? What she did made a huge difference in my life, in my heart, because God kept pricking away at me. Yes. Wake up. Amen. Wake up. You know your time is short. You yes. know I could return any moment. Amen. You know, yeah. we believe that. I, I believe that. The Absolutely. Lord can return any moment. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and I need to live like that, even if it's today or, you know, a thousand years. That's right. Yeah. So that was a huge changing point for me. Mm, moving in with your sister and then it being was, yeah, that. Yeah. It was monumental. Wow. And it still took a couple of years. I went to dozens of AA meetings, I mm -hmm. led AA meetings, and they were great, good, superior, good peer support groups. Um, I liked them, but I needed more. Yes. And I started going to church. I went to a Calvary Baptist church, and I met a guy who made a huge difference in my life. And uh, the Bible studies and uh, the men's prayer groups and uh, the men's um, and, and church, I got on the worship team, all that. It was so instrumental. And in my life, mm -hmm. uh, it bound me not only together with God and, and through His Holy Spirit, but with my brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. And it, it, the Lord really worked in my life. And I played in a Christian blues band for five years out in L.A. called the New King James Version Blues Band. They're still playing out there. Cool. And I, actually, when I moved back to L.A., I got the opportunity to sit in with them and play some blues again and, and wow. some of the music I love to play. Um, but um, the Lord has been so, so gracious to me, and he has pursued yeah. me throughout my life. Yes. And I believe he pursues all of us. Amen. Yeah. He will I, not lose anyone. Amen. I have a question for you because we asked this to our guest, Rebecca Halton, in the first hour. And I, and I want to know, now that we're in the second hour, from your perspective, was it super hard for you to forgive yourself and to accept that forgiveness from the Lord? I, I accepted God's forgiveness, I think, pretty readily. Mm -hmm. I have confidence in him. I have no confidence in myself. Hmm. What was hard for me is I knew how he had matured me at yes. one point in my life and then how I had let God down and turning my back on him and getting back involved in drugs mm -hmm. and, and the, the, the lust and the obsession with pornography and all that. Mm -hmm. I really fe felt that I had let God down. And, I, mm -hmm. and, and maybe I did have a hard time because I, how could he use me again? But, and at that time, I was involved with the New King James Version Blue Band. We were doing outreaches constantly. 
and I did my best to try to schedule things that were outreaches, not just church gigs, you know. Right. Um, and one day I was praying, and I was crying, and driving home, and I just felt the Lord say, you know, don't worry about it. You're mm -hmm. right back where I want you to be. You need to quit smoking pot. Mm -hmm. And I had to quit smoking pot. It was right. the hardest thing I did. I did, I did so in tears. Because I, I like but you were pot. obedient. But you were obedient. I was obedient. Yes. Yeah, but it was hard. But it, it has had its rewards. Amen. It's got to be. It's got to be troubling to you, John, to see so many municipalities and states legalizing something and calling it benign. When what I'm hearing from you is, forget the meth, forget the cocaine. The hardest thing you had to kick was pot. It was really difficult for me. It was. Um, I don't pretend to know how it affects other people. Yeah. And I, I do know people that are in the medical industry who do prescribe it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think it's a good choice. Mm -hmm. um, there may be medical reasons for it in people's lives and hearts. I think it's unfortunate that it has become an issue that is so readily available simply because the tax money comes from it. Yeah. Uh, and money is not the end of all uh, in our world, and so often. It has become that. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's sad. Well, I want to read something. Um, uh, John has written a book <coughs> called *The Addict's Choices: From Depths of Isolation to Heights of True Deliverance*. And um, near the end of your book, you said this: uh, "The distractions and temptations may not go away, but in my experience, God will give you the strength to confront those bad choices head on and make good ones instead." And this is what this is about. Even if those sometimes we hear miraculous stories where they're taken away, and sometimes yeah. they're really not. This yeah. is, could be a lifelong struggle, but He's given us the ability to make the good or bad choices. And this is a daily. Ex the daily walk, isn't it? It is. I mean, it is. Yeah. Now, I think some of the addictions I've had were taken away. Bam, gone. Mm -hmm. Other ones, not so much. Uh, you know, pornography is still a, a temptation. It's yeah. out there. Everywhere. It's Commercials. The way we're wired. It's I a mean, click away. Yeah. You know? It is. Uh, I mean, being a, living in California, there's a dispensary two blocks around the corner from where we live. Wow. You know, if I really wanted to, I could probably go down and get a prescription for anxiety. Sure. And I could be smoking pot legally. Yeah. But that's not what God has Amen. for me. Amen. That's what God has for well, me. He's, tell us about your ministry and where people can get your book. Uh, okay. The book can be gotten at theaddictschoices.com. Mm -hmm. There's also links there to our blog website, which is lifeisfullofchoiceseurope.com. Mm -hmm. And our main web website is lifeisfullofchoices.org. Uh, that grew out of actually dealing, uh, working with uh, inner city youth hmm. and underprivileged kids. And um, our director came up with the choices in order to help them understand that they do have choices. Amen. Because many of them thought they didn't have choices. Yes. They were pre-made by their their parents and their parents' parents for them. Hmm. Uh, dropout rates, drugs, gangs, all those things. Because sure. we live in East LA, it's all Hispanic. Most of the people there are great people. Uh, people across of the street live there for eighty for eighty years. Yeah. Uh, but there's they have s some the disadvantages just right. because of what they assume from themselves. Right. And uh, so we, that's where it grew out of. I found out that those things apply to, to drug addicts yes. and ad addictions and to sin. Yeah. Amen. Well, thank you well, John, so I much for we, being here. I really wish we had more time. I know. Because uh, you, you're a fascinating guest. And, uh, you know, I, and, and I'm sure that a lot of the viewers out there are saying the exact same thing. We want to learn more about John Childress mm -hmm. and his amazing story. I really encourage you to check out his uh, website mm -hmm. and look into his book, right. The Addict's Choices. I mean, Tanya literally has devoured this book. And uh, I think it's you will, too. Story it's a great story it's great. and a lot yeah. to learn. So, John, thank you so thank much you. for being here with us tonight. Yeah, thank you.